The His Girl Friday podcast is brought to you in part by Messenger Fellowship, living the kingdom, fulfilling the call, proclaiming the truth. How's it going, guys? This is Cameron Fry, His Girl Friday. It's been a long while since a podcast has hit the airwaves, probably a month and a half or so. A lot's been going on. I know I always say that, but, you know, with Juby still in the NICU, albeit at Vandy, not Centennial. She got transferred about a month ago. Uh, then house repairs, uh, about to move in, actually, this weekend uh, after getting the floors done. A new cabinet, cabinet's put in. There's been a lot of moving parts. Uh, in fact, um, there's also been a, a travel element. Just uh, got back from Phoenix on Sunday after several days there um we spent most of last week prepping for my grandma's funeral uh her memorial um was last friday and got to speak at it which was great uh, to remember her life but just there's been a lot of different um, you know necessary distractions if you will and uh the podcast his girl friday endeavors have had they've been compelled to resign on the back burner so i appreciate your patience um I'm coming at you uh, eight o'clock on a Thursday. Uh, excuse me, a Tuesday night. It's January 25th as I cut this. I just found out early today. I got di- I got diagnosed with COVID. Um, I picked it up during my Arizona travels, and I'm honestly not doing so well. And I know that some of you are like, "Well, why are you cutting a podcast?" Well, because I'm really stirred in a in a positive way, despite the physical element, the, the body betraying. Uh, actually, you know what? That's two more, but I can't say the body portrayed me. It's just some more life happens, and sometimes you could take the necessary precautions, i.e., vaccinations, which I got last fall. But sometimes the right decision means that you're in proximity with a virus, I, guess, I suppose. Um, I don't advocate putting yourself in dangerous situations, but I know I needed to be with my fam in social distance and somehow I don't know what happened maybe I got at the airport on the way in or on the way out but um whatever the case I have COVID but I know it could have been a lot worse under the circumstances so I count my blessings and just I felt like it would be fitting to share some thoughts as one who is feeling weak because I think you having that context might help um I'm not trying to show off here I am wanting to encourage as deep cries out to deep. And I, I don't want to let this month get away. Uh, so just to know this is more than meeting a personal goal or resolution. I can't remember the last time I hadn't posted a Scroll Friday post since 2014. That was before we even started. So um, it's not just me feeling out of sorts um but it's certainly wanting to meet you where you're at with some truth this uh, sharing some thoughts some awakening some insights god's been open my eyes to and if you want to access my blog uh the blog post that goes with this pod in case you're not already there uh, just go to our web- uh, website hisgirlfriday.com friday with a y and uh, my most latest, uh, my most recent post will be at the top of the page three more ways to sharpen your sword this is a uh, piggyback off part one, which was written four years ago, almost to the day, January 26, 2018. And I, I've always been fond of that particular post. It's been in the back of my mind to come back to it at some point. I just feel like now is the right time. And hopefully, you know, I shouldn't go another four years without potentially posting a part three. But so I'll just jump right in and try and keep this under 15 uh, as much as possible under the circumstances. Let me quickly pray for us before we continue. God, we thank you that you are here, that you are in our midst, that you are sovereign, that you are good, that you're true, and that you're wise and you're there for us, you're faithful, even in the midst of crisis and chaos and uncertainty, when our bodies seemingly betray us, when we feel like we're at the end of our rope, our wit's end, or we're just feeling the weight. We thank you, Lord, that even when you're not in charge as a consequence of our free will, you are always in control 
as your providence and that sovereign faithfulness reign supreme. So anoint tonight. Uh, will you do a work in our hearts? Will you open our eyes to discover you in a new, fresh way? May we go forth from this place, from this point, not the same, but not because we want to be different or just not normal in some way, but truly we'll grasp for your, the, the for your glory element as to being one who longs and desires to take next steps. And relying on your word for best practices as we take those next steps. That's the goal for tonight. Is that we learn the reality of your original design for us. Your heart for us. But we don't make this about our way and self-improvement, self-betterment and our own strength. But it will really be anchored in spiritual discernment. And really your love for us, your great love to see us change for the better, to change according to your will, to emulate, to really change as a product of, as a byproduct of emulating you, believing what you've said through your word along the way. So even as we learn how to apply the spirit and truth lifestyle to this year, by spirit and truth, may you again awaken us um, to encounter you in a fresh way, uh, stirring in and uh just opening our eyes, unveiling, that's a good word, uh, unveil your principles in truth tonight um, and help us to scale them with keen perspective from you as we take it to our life, our setting surroundings, uh, the people that you've put in our midst for such a time as this. So we give you all the glory and praise. Amen. All right. Again, sorry for the voice. Again, feeling pretty cruddy right now as uh, due to COVID, but we're going to press on and persevere on because why not? Sometimes it's all we have left to do, and it's just we can't be still. We could stand strong. We could stand still for a time. Uh, but ultimately, uh, I'm a firm believer that if you're going through a lot, if you're going through heck, then don't pause in a woe is me type way. Set your expectation to pause every now and then to stop and consider where God is, what he's doing, what he wants to reveal to you. But net wise, keep going, endure perseverance. It implies motion. Courage does not imply idleness. It implies motion. It doesn't mean that you get ahead of God or that you put your own foot down, that you carve out your own way. But that's dependent lifestyle, that really interdependent lifestyle, um, where you are in a habit of referencing God at not just critical intersections, um, decision-making moments, but just throughout each day as you're engaging and encountering God through prayer, through even just these, you know, in stillness, these, those, those whispers of, God, I need you right now. I need your help. Lord, help me to resist this thought. Uh, Christ strengthens me. I take captive this fear that I sense drawing on my doorstep. And, you know, just those staccato moments of vertical reliance that we go through each day. That's, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> that's what I'm really talking about here. So how do we specifically sharpen our sword? And by the, when I say sword... I'm, I'm talking about the sword of the Spirit coming out of Ephesians 6. How do we live life with that attached at the hip or in hand, specifically in 2022? After inquiring, here are three points that I feel like applies to a lot of us. And I know they, they all apply to me for sure. I'll just be straight up honest with you. But I'm hoping that... Um, you might find points of relatability along the way because I do think that some of these uh, points of principles are universal. So uh, the first point, don't force the reset. Often when we start a new year, we're quick to go into reset mode. Without hesitation, we launch into the dream of a better us, laced with new habits, self-improvements, all in the spirit of 
grabbing time and hope by the horns. However, when it comes to discerning God through his word, what is authorized and orchestrated throughout the sands of time, we must remember there's no rush on God's end for us to reach the ceiling, the pinnacle of our understanding. While Bible reading plans are beneficial to any spiritual walk, and I'm, a, I'm pro them, I'm an advocate of them, to jumpstart your quiet time, always start with humility, gratitude, and prayerful intentionality. Rather than assume a strategy, ask the Lord how he desires to guide you in spirit and truth through his word. Once confirmed, speaking of a strategy, then determine a game plan to keep you anchored and tethered to a spirit's leading and never look back. As I've applied these practices personally in recent weeks, I've sensed the Lord stir and counter in my heart. You probably gathered that through the opening minutes. That word came up a few times. I've sensed the Lord stir and counter in my heart in the context of embracing him through the Gospels. Digging down deeper, I've realized how God doesn't want me to map out my entire scriptural journey up front, but take a staggered wait-and-see approach, like a stair-step approach as part of that that pattern of referencing. All right, I've gone to this point, now what? I've gone to this point, God, now what? I know last year, prior to the Juby saga that started in August, I hit a decent stride at one point, engaging my Bible app for 100 straight days. But I'll tell you, there was just something odd and hollow about getting that notification. It was, it was almost like, why am I trying to resist this urge to feel proud of what I've done? Like, I'm proud for meeting this this number, but how many times did I actually, what, what motivated me was to keep the streak alive, you know? And, and I just feel like that's not how this year's supposed to be. For, for this year, God has made it clear he wants my attention on encountering him as opposed to targeting numerical affirmation. So I'll read through the Gospels in the coming weeks and months, capturing revelations on Jesus' rest- restorative power and creative miracles. From there, we'll assess the journey and proceed at his prompting. Again, being very specific about how this point applies to my journey, but I, I feel like giving you a, a case study, a practical example might help. You consider when you are in your, when you're in quiet time mode and you're praying this out with God. So a uh, Bible verse that comes to mind for this point, God proved to be good to the man who passionately waits, to the woman who diligently seeks. It's a good thing to quietly hope, quietly hope for help from God. That's Lamentations 325 through 26 in the message. Bottom line, don't perceive God's discovery package for you in 2022 arbitrarily. Like he's up, you know, has a relay wheel and, you know, you, you pray to activate this relay wheel that spins out something random. Don't do it that way. Rather, before diving in, seek and be still. There's that seek and stillness. It has its place. Then take inventory of pressure points. Again, action, motion. And though you have an invitation to his court, dare to knock on the door of God's heart before entering. Once you have a divinely inspired plan of action, this is point two, by the way, uh, which is integrate community and conversation. Once you have divinely inspired plan of action, your next challenge that you choose to accept is to de-silo your insights. Although intimacy may start in the cloud spaces of our hearts, ultimately, we were intended to share the unique angles of God's outpouring with community. Accordingly, ask yourself, how does God want me to take our conversations, a quiet time, to my neighbors, local church, the towns in which I do business, and from there into the world? Sure, by, by all means, journal your thoughts and record the vision, a la Habakkuk 2, too, but just don't limit the manifestations of your devotions to the notepad, if you catch my drift. After all, there's way more in store with how God wants to illuminate your heart in 2022. He wants to de-silo the revelations. They're just not locked up. I mean, they keep them for ourselves, but... Consider this, apart from corporate fellowship, make it a point to meet with friends and or mentors in 2022. During your gatherings, be transparent about spiritual matters and what God is teaching you. Don't have an agenda to trumpet your voice or force awakenings. Start with one-on-ones, 
unveil the fruit of your quiet times organically and see where the dialogue takes you. So, in this case, and I could probably be more specific, so I will, uh, don't necessarily invite someone to dinner or for coffee just so that you can spill the beans of what God is saying to you. Actually call coffees, dinners, meetings, uh, hang times for the sake of meeting them where they're at, like seeing what's going on in their life. Like by all means be um, other centered and focused, uh, inquire how you can help and be there, maybe a support system for them. Uh, so that's implied. Uh, but I'm also saying don't be shut off. Like that's the main point with this, this piece of the blog uh, and pod is don't force the issue take agenda out of it be open either way first Thessalonians 5 13 through 14 get along among yourselves each of you doing your part gently encourage the stragglers and reach out for the exhausted pulling them see that's the thing when we uh, I'm not saying this this is the only reason why we should want to engage community um, but again wanting to be there for people wanting to encourage them and and know that someone is there rooting for them that's where I'm after here and doing so gently implies modesty implies meekness and reach out for the exhausted if necessary uh, if you encounter them pull them like a, and don't just rely on you know sometimes your revelation is meant to be for you it's not that everything you you download from the spirit is meant to go somewhere so don't inherit that pressure but all I'm saying is you, don't forsake the, the fellowship of the saints engage them um, in corporate settings but also um, uh, just consider opportunities to meet and to catch up with people as they come out of their COVID comas perhaps perhaps they're wanting to step out in a greater way and they're just looking around waiting for someone to meet them up by all means take that challenge um, but put yourself in that position that's what I'm saying. So while much Bible reading is done solo style, that this doesn't mean silo style. What God has to say to you may not be restricted to you. Accordingly, consider how God is grooming you to be a mouthpiece for his power and presence. Last point, pray and declare the word. So far, we've established how quiet time is not confined to individual study, but is maximized in spirit and truth. While there's not a one-size-fit-all solution to channeling truth by the Spirit, one of the best ways to know the Word is to pray and declare it. I'm reminded from Colossians 4.2, if we're to continue with anything, let it be prayer, fused with thanksgiving. Even though we may suffer and enter in with fear and trembling as Jesus did during His ministry, we... We could proclaim the goodness of God in reference. Despite the adversity we may be dealing with, we can fire up faith and ignite our hope by testifying who God is constantly. In this way, we can use God's word to center our perspective on what is everlasting, and from that, we could scale our perception of present trouble, knowing God's word is a lamp unto our feet. So as you read and examine the word, be prepared to stop. Set your expectations on God's faithfulness to convict and respond. And per those pauses, when in doubt, affirm God's truth through praise and profess the reality of his love into your midst. It may not make sense or seem natural, but that is a paramount choice we're faced with every day. It's not cheesy. It's not a formula. Again, why wouldn't we want to scale our anxieties, even surrender them. In fact, we shouldn't, if we're dealing with anxiety, why wouldn't we want to surrender that entirely to the feet of Jesus so we can cast as far as the east is from the west? There's a way to do it. And I think some of us, we, we don't want to go about the way, but we just somehow want to snap our fingers and whatever's crippling us, fear, anxiety, anger, bitterness, resentment, pride, prejudice, whatever, that we, it's gone. Or just maybe a stronghold, an addiction even. It could look a lot different for a lot of people, but one thing I come back to 
as I talk about this point is this is one it's a verse I've referenced a couple of times, but it so captures the essence of why his glorified exists. First Peter two nine in the English standard, but you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. I love that verse so much. One of the best ways to declare God's sovereignty in any situation is through prayer and exhortation. The more you cultivate this strength into your quiet time, the more you'll be able to prophetically encourage the people God has placed in your life for such a time as this. Let's pray. God, you are majesty. You are such a sweet and sovereign Savior. We worship and celebrate you. We thank you for your grace, your compassion. We thank you that your mercy is new every morning. That your love refreshed itself. That you are the Prince of Peace. And you're the steward of that. You offer that into our midst, regardless of what we're walking through. And regardless of what we're walking through, we want to walk with you. That we know for sure. As we commit to better slash best practices in 2022, we, we want to sharpen our swords this year. You know, we want to be tethered to your word as we go about our daily lives, our affairs, our business decisions, family, uh, you know, our, our times with family. Um, we breathe you in into this moment. Will you calibrate these practical points of wisdom and massage them into our spirit, into our hearts, help them know how they're to apply specifically into us, how you're supposed to build on them. I think, uh, Lord, Lord I, in writing this, I felt like I was laying some foundation. It wasn't so much layering on top of a foundation that had already been set, but that there was foundation that was being broadened. And I really believe that you want to build upon that foundation for those who are lending their ears and their eyes to this post and this pod. So um, may we go forth and unchan- uh, may we go forth forever changed, even in the subtlest of ways. We know that we are here for a purpose, uh, divinely inspired, with a unique set of skills, and innate wirings, and personalities, and idiosyncrasies, and how to channel that into our intimate moments with you, and being able to receive the output of that. That's what we just desire to take next steps corporately by faith. Show us the way. Illuminate the way. And we say thank you, Lord, with with praise and gratitude on our lips. Amen. All right, guys. Cam out. I got to take care of some personal matters and make sure I get some meds. I'm fading fast. But thank you for being willing to listen to this under the circumstances and hope you got something out of it. Would love to hear from you. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Godspeed. And as I always say, I'll catch you on the fry. Peace.